Okay, guys, we'll move into Sundex then. Mox, you want? Not expensive, it was. <laughs> Did we Amazon? Do we Google it? Do we? Hey, Can we Google, Google it? Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, do six like four, three, one. What's that? No, no, no. It's... <laughs> was it eye watering? Hey, was it eye watering? No, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. The um, yeah, sorry, mate. Go. No, go on. It's more interesting than what. No, 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 no. It's, it's absolutely fine. No, he he uh, he played a huge part for me, Josie, in my career, and and like I said before, leading into the game, without him ever really knowing it, I was consciously always observing and seeing, and he was a big, big help to me, and I always respect that. Your opposite number. Um, Again on Sunday, he's been linked with the PSG job this week, Brendan. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. It's one of the blue ribbon um, jobs at the moment in world football, the PSG job. They're only getting a blue blue ribbon coach if they do approach him. Respected, obviously. Yeah, he's yeah. he's clearly a very good coach, uh, Antonio. He clearly wants to work with the best players. It helps. <laughs> well, that, that, that's that's everything. Yeah. You know, well, you know, you, you the game is about having the top players, and uh, and if you don't have them, then you're trying to help them be the best players. Some coaches only want to work with the very best players. You know, and and Antonio strikes me as someone who wants to to do that. You know, when he was. Uh, in particular at UV and that had a great spell there with the best players in the league and then came into Chelsea who were strong and obviously he did very well He's, he said himself in, uh, in Tottenham about how he wants more players and and that's what we all love yeah. to, we would all love that but um, but it doesn't always work out like that so um, but he's clearly like I said earlier he's clearly a, a very good coach who can Organise a team to play a certain style of football, and knows clearly what what he wants to to achieve in a team. And if he ends up leaving there and going to PSG, then he'll be another one of you know a number of very good coaches. But Mauricio Pochettino is an excellent coach, fantastic coach. Thomas Tuchel before him was a very good coach. Unai Emery before him was a very good coach. But he will, the difference being is that he, with all due respect to the, the galaxy of stars that Spurs have got, PSG's at a different, uh, the moments are at a different level, aren't they, in terms of the quality of play at their disposal? Yeah. It's about the team, though. It's about the team. You know, you, uh, it's it's always, that that's what allows you to, to, to win. If you have a top player's they need to be able to function as a team. And, uh, yeah, there are obviously some top players at, at PSG and and uh, Rizzo obviously is an outstanding coach as well. It's changing tax likely to one of, your, one of your own outstanding talents. Yeah. Um, you tied down, you didn't waste any time really tying down Wesley Fofana to a, to a new deal. Uh-huh. There doesn't seem to be a, a, an abundance of real top quality young defensive talent out there at the moment well, some of the big boys missed a trick because he's um, I know he paid a lot of money for it but um, I just think you've got another major asset on your hands in terms of- yeah for me he'll develop into a, a world class you know central defender he, he'd only played 17 games uh, before we had taken him so he might have been too much. He might have been a risk for for some teams. There's enough of the big clubs have taken other talents, like the boy Salibi, who was yeah. playing beside him, was yeah. taken. And we just seen something in him that uh, felt he had the characteristics to play at this level, and uh, and that's been reinforced, you know, more than once over. in, in terms of actually now working with him, you know, he's um, he's really going to be. A, but you still see from the first goal last night he's got he's got things he needs to improve on he is so young you know he's positioning in the goal so these are things that he has to develop uh, so um, but the raw material is absolutely there he's got speed he's dominant he's competitive 
which is so important. You know, some players have physicality, but they don't necessarily use the physicality. He's aggressive, he defends forward. And once he gets the experience of the positioning game, then he'll go on to be one of the leading centre halves in world football. I've got absolutely no question about that. But at this moment in time, this is an incredible place for him to be learning, playing with the other fantastic players. It's a chance to develop here, getting game time. And, uh, and he loves being here. So uh, I don't mm-hmm. think other teams missed a trick. I just think it's um, he's a young player that we really pick up very, very quickly in his development. And uh, he's, he's a very important asset for us. Yeah, obviously, you did your due diligence on him. Did you do any yourself, right now? Because Claude was at San Etienne, wasn't he? When was Claude Pearl, was it? Was Claude was there, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, but what was it you saw in those 17 games? I mean, I'm sure your, your recruitment staff, you know, have a good look through all those. Games. Yeah, well, well, you think, especially at the time, we couldn't we couldn't watch games live. Mm. So, virtually, it was done. Uh, been remotely, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think the first thing for me, you see whether he's. He, uh, his ability in the air no matter how much you want to play football your centre half need to be able to head the ball in the Premier League you know it's no coincidence you, you look at Virgil van Dijk his top top defender Ruben Diaz top defenders you know so you have to be able to defend you know and that means being able to, you know the game in this country has always been about your centre half being able to attack the ball so first and foremost for me he was good in the air and he frontal balls he went attacked it he was aggressive brilliant secondly for us I like my defenders to defend forward can they anticipate can they nick it can they read the game and you've seen that in him as a young player in all the games that we watched um, and like it's, and then in the games defensively you could see he was aggressive you know he's not see his contact uh, and then obviously with the ball he's a comfort with the ball he doesn't need to be Anything other than competent with it technically, and uh, and and when you can see his bravery in the game, then absolutely brilliant. So uh, we had the chance to to speak with him. He came across as a really good kid who wants to develop, and uh, and that's been totally reinforced coming in. He's he's a great boy, and yeah, he was so unfortunate this season, and for us. Like you could see the difference since he's come back. Yeah. The stability he gives the team. And that's always the sign of the very best players. They make the others around them better. Yeah. And he certainly does that for a young player. And uh, but, but Van Dijk, for instance, I mean, that Liverpool was, when he came in, all of a sudden, everybody just boom, boom. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. he's the world's best centre half. He's a phenomenal player. And that's... Yeah, your points about good players, mate. Well, brilliant players, mate. Good players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so yeah, so he's one of a number of really young talents that we have that are learning the game, developing the game, becoming winners in the game. And, uh, yeah, he's he's very good. Pleasure. Just to have on, on that on Wednesday, you said that you see, you watch those clips, you saw those attributes, you moved in. I think it kind of on Sorry, I just have to say, first, it's the, the scouts as well. They were first and foremost, they pick up on, because they have, they know my profile of player that I like, you know, so they then look at the talents within that and he obviously fits that profile. So they initially have to find him. So that's, you can, I'd say. Well, it moves up to my point, but I think Mox's point is, how, how is it, it's often the case of left and left recruitment, why is it, why is it your guys that are seeing that? Other clubs will also see that, but they tend not to see it. They, they don't look at him or like, why is it always, why is it you guys that have seen that when other clubs could have also seen that? Is that just, does that just play into your scouts are really good? Yeah, so this is a bit of everything. I think it's sometimes like the, the young players, like other players will have seen him. It's not that he was hidden behind closed doors. Every Everyone's seen him. It's sometimes that is that what a team needs? You know, so if you think, you know, if you can play for a top team, but if the top teams already have centre halves that's there, then uh, they may not have needed him. You know, uh, some will, but they've taken others. They, they've decided, you know, at the time that we took Wesley, there was other centre halves in the market, you know, that end up going to other clubs. 
and they choose other players over him. Um, but we we were really happy with with Wesley and what we've seen. And then of course he also the player has to then want to come as well. So um, so no, so he wasn't hidden. He was out there. He was playing, and uh, we'd hoped that he could make the impact that he'd made. But uh, but for me, he's he's uh, we've seen that from the very very first session he came in on the day trend before a game. And you could just, just, and especially having worked with top young players and what that looks like, I could, straight away you could see his his ability. Just picking up something you mentioned earlier about Jose's comments after the game about not feeling that your players would be intimidated going into what would be a huge accent for a lot of players. Um, I think you would kind of agree with that and that you would believe your players can. I wonder how do you how do you prepare them for what they're going to face, that many people, that atmosphere? And also, potentially, you mentioned it's the first time playing at Spurs Stadium with lots of fans. Does playing there this Sunday, is that a decent stepping stone to preparing them for the atmosphere and the time that they will then see? Yeah, it's not new. Let's be clear. You know, we play at Old Trafford with over 70,000. You play at Arsenal over 60,000. And we're in a country where it's the most passionate in the world. So players are used to it. Yeah, we get young players. But I always say the the louder the, the support is against you, the tighter our bond comes together. You know? So whenever there is that atmosphere and that feeling in what I've said in some of these qualification games leading into it, let's make the louder the opposition are support, the tighter we become. And that's something that uh, goes through the team. Is, does that, that, the tighter they become, is, does that come from the, the players' mentality themselves that you, that you like and the player that you want in your team? Does that come from how you coach them and the kind of that feel that you want to build at a club? Is it a bit of both? Like, uh, how, yeah. how, is that, how is that thing of the louder the role, the closer we get. How's that formed? Again, that, that's a constant. That, that, that's, uh, that comes from the values you have within your club. You know, and, and we always try to work along the lines of respect and courage and unity and responsibility. And that forms the, the, the core values of every day of our life. And then, in, and then, Obviously, you're you're spreading the message around any any top team, any good team has spirit, and you have to have that. And there's not a team that is a top team that doesn't have it. You know examples of teams that have great players, but they don't have spirit, and that counts for everything. And this is something that we 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 have here, and we've created that, we've developed it. We want to continue cultivating that. And it's something that is very much an important uh, facet that you need within any successful team. So hopefully we can see that. And hopefully we do in, in a lot of our games. And just lastly, you touched on it before again, the previous meeting and how it ended now. Disappointing it was. Um, how much have you, your players, grown, learned since? I know there's still still an issue in recent weeks of conceding late goals, but from that Tottenham game, how far have they come from that? Yeah, listen, this game, especially when you're a young player develop, it's all about learning. You know, and and from that, I always say, you know, once you've had that experience, learn from it, and then look to win. And and there's absolutely no doubt that you're still going to lose late goals. Uh, that, that's what, what's going to happen. But there'll be a point in your season where that experience will not allow you to when it's really needed. You know, and and that's a game. I said it clearly to the guys after this. You can't lose that game. You just cannot lose that. You know, you win that game. And if ever, if anything that experience gave the players is that 
you know that anything is possible in the game of football. 2-1 up, 30 seconds to go. You have a free kick on the edge of your box. The game's won. So you cannot lose that. Because now you know it's within the realms of possibility if you don't manage it. You know, that's what can happen. And that's the learning that takes place from it. So doesn't say it's never going to happen again, because it can do, you know. But uh, but you're certainly aware of the management side of the game. And uh, and listen, you've seen it against better teams. Better teams than us will lose late goals. But it was an experience that is another harsh and hard experience for the players, but something that uh, they've learned from. Cheers, guys. We'll, no we'll wrap it there and we'll see everyone. On Super. Enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> see you, quick.